Hey, welcome back to Snapball Games. My name is Max, and this is Lewin, and we are back with another Pupper Popper League, and uh, we're going to be playing some Boros Bully today uh, with Gates. Don't forget the Gates. Um, I'll get into this deck tech in a second. Real quick, we're going to shout out the channel. It's youtube.com slash snapbolt. Go to my channel and subscribe. It's really the best way to support us. Uh, I record all my leagues live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash snapboltgames, so follow me there, come hang out live, a lot of fun. Now let's get into this deck and what we're doing today. In the last league on my channel, you can check that out too, I played a Boros deck with Gates, but it was the Boros Synth Shell, and if you're looking for the difference, I actually didn't know it till you know, not too long ago, what the difference is between Boros Synthesizer and Boros Bully, I guess Boros Monarch, Boros Bully, um, there's different names, and the Boros Synthesizer, or kind of like the Monarch Shell, plays Core Skyfisher and Glint Hawk. And this Boros Bully deck plays Faith that's Looting, Squadron Hawk, Prismatic Strands, generally more ways to take the Monarch. So, we're trying this shell today. Um, I think this deck is actually really well positioned right now, so let's get into what we're doing. Um, we have the gate package of 8 gates plus 3 basilisk gates, so 11 gates total, and then just a, a lot of basic plains and mountains and a couple Boros garrisons. Just to get to a higher mana count total with garrison seems good. A little clunky, we have 10 top lands, but I think that's a sacrifice we make for playing this deck. Then uh, we just play a bunch of white creatures, Thraven Inspector, Squadron Hawk, Seeker of the Way, and Uro. Um, these cards are all really good with Battle Screech and Prismatic Strands. So, Faithless Looting is just so good in this deck. We can discard Uro, we can discard Prismatic Strands, we can discard Battle Screech. Um, all these cards can be flashback and Rally the Peasants, I forgot to mention. All those cards can be flashback to looting for just insane amounts of value. Now, how did I come to playing this deck? I think it's actually really well positioned right now because Strands is good against all the red decks like Killing Fiend and the Burn decks and stuff. He's getting about done here. Um, you can hang out till the end of the deck deck, right? Yeah, um, Strand is really good against all the red decks, plus we just get Sacred Cat and Seeker of the Way as these life-linking creatures that late game we can pump up with Basilisk Gate. Because imagine you just go Seeker of the Way, like you have like six lanes and play, you go Bolt something, then Basilisk Gate, like plus four more on Seeker of the Way, then you have a huge life linker. So a lot of synergy there. I love the synergy between Prismatic Strands and Palace Sentinels, because you can just have strands in the graveyard from a looting or something, play Palace Sentinels, and then they can't take the Monarch because they can never hit you because you just strand them. Um, so I'm going to let him go, and then we'll just go over the last second of the deck tech. Hey, you want to get a treat for being a good boy? All right, let's go. We'll be back to finish off the deck deck and then for round one. One second. All right, when my fiance is home, he only likes to hang out with me for so long. So let's move on to the sideboard, and then let's get into a league. We have Triple One Missionary for mostly the red decks. I really cut down on the artifact hate, only because there's really not that much affinity in the leagues. There might be more in the challenges, but really not that many people I found are playing affinity in the leagues. So just two Dust to Dust, two Revoke Existence. It could just be four Dust to Dust, but I actually really like uh, Revoke against a lot of the enchantment based decks, or you know if we see like a bunch of Journeys or something, um, or you know like Boggles. I like having the Revokes. Plus, it can be pretty good just to have a split anyway especially against Affinity, because you can play Revoke on turn two, where Dust to Dust, you can't often play till turn three or four. One Gorilla Shaman, so we still have a lot of Affinity hate, still should be a reasonable matchup with five hate cards. The deck is still good, obviously. Two Electricery and four Pyroblasts, a lot of Pyroblasts. It's possible that I should play some number of Hydroblasts on the sideboard and just cast it off these eight blue sources, especially with Faithless Looting and other card draw. We can uh, find it our blue source relatively easily and it's also pretty good against burn um just the red decks are so popular right now i think again i really like the position of this deck in the meta we'll see how we do um but i like battle screech of the card a lot strands just seems like it couldn't be a better time to play play this card um and you can see we're just a white deck splashing looting and bolt um our mana is actually not that bad i played one practice game with this list um, just to see if there was any jarring things that stood out to me one match and uh, i had four basilisk gate i just went down to three and put another planes in just because one time i drew two basilisk gates and i was like oh, i can't really cast my spells so it went down to three um without further ado let's get into round one all right welcome to round one against ruben's netto we have a 
single Boros garrison in our hand, so we have to mulligan. This hand looks totally fine. Can just put back one of these strands, probably. I said, hey, GL, GL and HF. Good luck and have fun. I am going to just probably lead on Cat. I'm going to put back a strands. See what we're up against here. Both of us on a mulligan. Could be Jund, could be something else. I like to lead Cat over Inspector because if they don't play anything on two, just starting to get in lifelink hits is kind of a nice swing. So I generally like to just lead on Cat. They said, are you recording? They must know the channel. I said, yep, just started streaming a league. Okay, I don't know what this is. It might just be like black green with deadly dispute and acre wellspring, some kind of like sack deck. We'll see. Hopefully Ruben's Netto doesn't ghost me here. <laughs> Bridge. So it is just Jund with probably Icar Wellspring Deadly Dispute. They just go in Central Recall. It's really good. Ooh, Seeker of the Way is a good one too. Just going to attack with both. There's no way that I can wait till five mana to play Seeker, right? I just need to play it and hope. I think I can play Basilisk Gate, though, because then if I draw another gate next turn, maybe I just start activating, depending on what the opponent does. So I just go Seeker, pass. Of course, it would be nice to hold this up, but I don't really need to protect these. I need to protect this, but I don't want to wait two more turns to play Seeker with Strands up. Plus, they can easily have cast downs and stuff. Yeah, well, they bolt it. Maybe I should have just crap clue. I think I like just playing Cliffgate, pump, start pumping Cat right now. Just force them to, to answer. What I could also do is I could just pump for two. Because then if they play a removal spell on Cat, I can go Planes and Balm it. And I only lose that on one extra point of damage. That's probably worth it. Just Uro here. They said, great. I just want to say I love to watch your videos. Congrats, man. Hey, thanks so much. Appreciate that. Right, they're just going Deadly Dispute right now. Maybe looking for Bolt. They found it. So I'm glad I, I, I'm glad I took the line that I did because now I get to Embalm Cat right now. Attack for one. Opponent still with six cards in hand. They've been drawing so many cards off their dispute combos. I wonder if they're also just like kind of mo a mostly Rakdos type deck with a green splash and just happen to draw multiple green sources. Whoa, Vampire Sovereign? Okay, I was not expecting that. This is five mana, three, four, flying. When the ETB's target opponent loses three, you gain three. So it's like kind of like a... Um, what is that vampire? The five mana four three that drains for four if you have metalcraft. Maybe they play this and that vampire, but this is a card that was recently downshifted in double master, so pretty cool to see. Alright, let's go just cliff gate white. I'm not gonna leave anything up. I'm just gonna make a four four lifelink and attack. Seems good. They're tapped out. This is kind of like just getting me value without. I'm spending mana and like getting actual like advantage out of it. I can crack this clue later to draw a card, but I don't think I need to right now. And actually, I just realized I probably should have just attacked with Inspector too, and then bolted this if they blocked. I don't know. It's kind of tough to say. Play Bridge, play for Wall Street. I think they're mostly Rakdos, my guess. Yeah, Sea Drino with Flying. We're going to get Mountain here. They don't attack. Seeker of the way. Okay, now we can Seeker with Strands up. So I have five, six mana potentially. So I think I just go Land, Seeker, Pass. Kind of is telegraphing what I'm going to do. 
But if they don't have like a cast down, they kind of get wrecked, right? They played two a bolt and a blast, but they could easily have, you know, four blasts, four bolts in their deck. I'm gonna just take it a little bit slow here and just go seeker past the turn. I could have again hit for four right now, four lifelink, but I don't know, I feel like this is a little bit better. Oh, I, I gotta turn that turn that down a little bit. Wow. Mana traders just gifted 20 subs. Thank you so much. Is that the official mana traders? Appreciate that. Wow. Definitely the most subs ever gifted. So that was was loud, but it's the official mana traders. Hey, thank thank you so much. Really appreciate that. That's uh that's that's awesome. Love mana traders. I use I used them previously before using card order, gotta recommend their services a lot. So go check out mana traders. That was thank you so much. Okay, let's get back to the game. They cast down our thing, we can't strands it, so essentially worst case scenario here. I can just crack clue because if they bolt cat, they bolt cat, but I wanna just be mana efficient right now. That was awesome. Okay, there's a looting. Looting's not bad, actually. I don't hate just playing looting right now, because I could discard strands and cat and just, like, essentially Ancestral Recall here. Ooh, Battle Screech. I kind of want to... I kind of want to keep the Screech in hand and cast that and put the strands in the graveyard. That seems really good. So I can just... Maybe I can also discard land. Because then I could just play Screech, play Cat, flashbacks. Well, play Screech, flashback Screech, play Cat, leave up strands from the yard. I really like that. I don't need this land, I don't think. It's just a basic. This seems great. So let's go play Cat, play Screech, flashback Screech. Actually, I'll probably if they boarding party, I'd probably jump with the Raven. Tap like these. Not sure. Daniel from Brazil, I like that. Easy gift sub dodge. Nice. <laughs> that was a that was an incredible dono. Twenty subs is a lot. We can stop like a fiery cannonade or something. They just go ardent elementalist. This is definitely mostly Rakdos and they just drew multiple green sources. They're probably splash Fangren Marauder. That's my guess. I do need to start playing a little faster here. Another sovereign. Oh, boarding party. Okay. Boarding party reveal lightning bolt. Bolt like a bird or something. I'm not gonna strand. I'm not gonna. But just prismatic strands. Like they need main deck cannonade in order to really get better than this, and then I get a free block on boarding party right now. I'm actually gonna do it. Name red. So all red sources are prevented for the turn. Another cat, huh? I can flashback looting. I don't hate that. I can Basilisk Gate, pump flyers, start getting in with all my flyers. And they, I mean, they have Sovereign, but I have Bolt too. The thing is, if I go flashback looting, I can't necessarily pump with Basilisk Gate and Bolt. I want to Bolt Boring Party, but maybe I don't need to. Maybe I can just attack with all my birds, pump one of them to a 4-4, they block another random bird, kill it. I Bolt their Sovereign. I get in for six, they go to nine, then I just play cat from hand, or keep it for next turn for discarding to looting. I think I like that. Let's do that.
I don't really need to bolt boarding party. It's not actually doing that much here. I can just chump with cat, replay cat next turn. They're chumping there. Wow. They, they're not even making me bolt the Sovereign. It's probably because they're going to somehow rebuy the Sovereign from the graveyard, is, is my guess. So now I can actually do an interesting... I don't need to bolt now, so now I can just flash back Wooden. That was an interesting block. I wasn't expecting that. I can discard Garrison Cat, or I can discard... Cat, cat, get more mana. I think I'd rather have more cats total, right? I don't think I need the garrison. So cannonade crushes us. But otherwise, we're in a really good position. I was expecting them to have Pulse of Marasa. Blightening us. Okay. Another boarding party cleansing wildfire. Oh, they cleansing wildfire the bathless gate. That was sweet. That can keep them alive for a fair amount longer. If they attack with this. I'll. Oh, they have two boarding parties now. They're tapped out though. I think I'm down to just kill one of these and then just start flashing back all my cats next turn. The blightning was, oh, they have, I didn't see that they had that treasure. It was hiding off to the side. It wasn't, I wasn't paying attention to that. I thought that was just another random artifact. That actually really sucks. I probably wouldn't have gone for it. Hawk was obviously an incredible, incredible top deck there. I think I'm gonna play one more Hawk and then I'm gonna play two cats. And then attack for four, hit them to eight. I have six power in the air now. Because if I played one more Hawk, I still would only have seven power. So Bolt is still lethal here if they don't gain life. And this just got, got me one more body in play. Another boarding party? Army of Industry. Nice. That is sick. Get Icker Wellspring back. Draw. It dies at the end of their turn. They're going to draw again. But we might be able to just aggro them in the air here. Sovereign. Damn. Sovereign's kind of doing it. And Golden Egg. So they can gain three again. They're gaining a lot of life. I think we trade Chump here. We're not... Let's see. What if I go Chump Chump? Talk with all. I hit for five. They go to six. I lose one Hawk. I play two more Hawks plus a Cat. I guess I actually like that better. I just try to race in the air. I know they can gain three, but I could also just draw a rally or something and win. Seeker of the way. Just gonna play all these two drops. I'm still at 15. I'm gonna attack with all my flyers, just hit for five. We're in kind of rough spot though. Opponent's deck does look really sweet. They're kind of grinding us out here. They've drawn a lot more cards than us. With Icker Wallspring Deadly Dispute. Tommy draw two. Five mana three six draw two. This is another Kami. No, another boarding party. They're at six though. So they have to leave up two for Golden Egg right now, also. Fanger and Marauder would be game, probably. Boarding party into... What? Deadly Dispute? 
They've drawn basically their entire deck. We essentially have to win next turn or, or we're going to lose. They attack with everything. They have five cards in hand as well. And they can gain life. I have to just go block, 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 I think. Take six, seven, eight. Go to seven. I'm dead to blast plus bolt, which they could easily have. But this is the most I can block. I don't think I have a better line. Rally the peasants. They go to nine. I attack for five. Oh, now they, they gain another three, so they can gain six, go up to 12. So rally off the top is the only out. Not rally. GG. That was pretty cool from the opponent, honestly. We were never able to quite turn the corner. I think when I when I blocked like that, that was pretty bad for me, actually. When I didn't realize they had the treasure, I think that really ended up costing me, actually. I think I'll just bring in this uh, these land destruction spells, essentially. Palace Sentinels and Guardians seem great. Yeah, I think this I think this deck is solid. Can board out like I don't know if we need all the cats. They seem kind of weak. Strands actually seems pretty good. Bolt seems good. I can board out like one looting. Just because we don't necessarily need to discard that much. I could just board out triple cat. Cat's just not quite high impact enough in this matchup. They can just kind of ignore it early and then I think this is good. Taking them down on mana is actually, I think, pretty strong in this matchup. Sure, they can just draw out of it with Cleansing Wildfire, but keeping them off of casting their boarding parties, their five drops, plus giving them mana problems, it, it all uh, certainly happens. All right, we'll keep this. Hawk into Battle Screech lines. Let's go. We could potentially discard a Battle Screech if we want to try to aggro them. And they are probably going to have Wraths post-board, whether it's... They're going to have Cannonades or Suffocating Fumes or Arms of Adar, you know, all those type of cards. Bridge. Ooh, there's Looting. Wow. I think I just play Hawk. Just get two Hawks. Just kind of take it a little more slow. I don't think I need to discard a Battle Screech here. Save that for like fuel to discard the looting, basically. They're basically playing this deck called Mostly Rakdos. It's a black red cleansing wildfire pile. And then you play Boarding Party. They're playing the new S Sovereign. Um, and then. They uh, also have like a Kami, but yeah, their deck is sweet for sure. So I can go Cliffgate, Hawk, Pass. I can go Looting, see what I draw, and then probably just play a Hawk, discarding like a Rally and a Battle Screech. It's pretty tempting. I think I'm going to do that. Ooh, there's a strands. Perfect, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. So I can discard strands, rally now, play a second hawk, and then I'm always leaving up strands. Just discarding prismatic strands is just so strong. Discard one of these rallies for sure, and then go... Hmm, it's actually interesting. Because I can go cliffgate, and then next turn I can just start battle screeching. But I can also go Planes, play Squadron Hawk, get Squadron Hawk. It's pretty close. I think I like the Battle Screech line of just going Screech on 4, Screech on 5. 
with uh, strands up. So I'm going to do it. I'll attack, though. Sure, they can bolt hawk, but if they want to just do that, then I can just play double hawk next turn. Wellspring draw, tap wind. They might have a bolt or something. There's another looting. I think I'm going to just stick to the plan here. Getting these down is just so good. Because now we're just throwing so much damage on these rallies. Hey, Marty B, thanks for the gift. I tried to actually turn that sound down, but I wasn't successful. I wasn't sure how to find it on the, the, the controls, so. Thank you for the gifted sub, though. I know you've always been there to support, so appreciate it. There's a cliff gate. So let's see, if I go rally attack for 15 with strands up, that seems really good, right? Just go rally from the graveyard in case they have graveyard hate. Attack with four of these, play a cliff gate. Then I could, I could even also play a looting. I guess I could just lead on Faithless looting. I think I like that. Ooh, there's a Basilisk gate as well. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard one Cliff Gate, one Squadron Hawk, and then I'm going to play Rally from the Graveyard, attack with four things for 15, leaving up Strands, and then next turn I can leave up Rally, Flashback Rally, or the turn after or something, but yeah, so let's discard Cliff Gate plus Squadron Hawk. Let's attack with four things. Flashback rally. I'm still leaving up strand. That's why I'm not attacking with the hawk. And then I just play clip gate pass. Next turn, I'm threatening double double rally or hawk into battle screech, flashback battle screech, if they like somehow wrath us. But this is classic Boros Bully game plan right here. They're just drawing cards. I don't care about that. Yeah, thank you, uh, Squad MTG. Yeah. I actually, um, I actually did see where to turn off, like, and turn up and down a lot of the other sounds, just not the gifted sub sound. But it's, it's probably there. I just missed it. I'll, I'll do it after. Um, I guess I just let this resolve because they have to cannonade right now. Otherwise, if I untap, they're still gonna be dead. But if I flashback strands right now, they can just cannonade in response, kill all my all my my entire team. So I think I just let it resolve, and then if they want to cannonade right now, they can. Okay. So now we stick to the plan. We just go hawk into screech, flashback screech. Plus we have basilisk gate, or even more inevitability here. We're still in a great position. Yes, I want to use the ability, get the last hawk. Of course, never drawing hawks in multiples, because that's how you play with that card. Okay, nice. This deck just reloads like that so well. Battle for each hell of a card. You know, I'm not sure, Jacob Hawk, I just found it on Google by searching like something. It just links to like a website and then you connect your Magic Online account and then you can just use the extension on OBS. See, Spirit Squad knows better than I do. So we're just in still a great position here. 
Do I need to go Strand's flashback Strand or a uh, Rally flashback Rally? I could leave up. What if I go Rally flashback Rally? Only attack with three birds, just so they can't like. I guess there's no point to do that because I can only flashback Strand's one time. What about just play one rally, attack with four birds, not even flash it back? Alternatively, I can start with play gate, pump with gate. If they don't do anything, then I'm just in a great spot. I think I'm going to do that. Pump with gate. Because this is, is this lethal three, four, five, nine? Not quite. A galvanic blast, that one. Okay, so now I let that resolve. Don't want to use my strands yet if I don't have to. Then let's go rally the peasants. I guess this is only putting them to one. I don't go for it, and I don't think there's a reason for me to go for it. I'd rather just leave up strands again. And I shouldn't play any more lands because I can start discarding extra lands to looting now. And the uh the list is on Aether Hub because Stream Decker doesn't have uh the gates yet. There's Cannonade. It's not getting better than this. We'll see if we can beat double Cannonade. I'm not sure if we can beat triple. They have it. Yeah, they have it. They're at four, though. I still have one creature left and lootings. Plus, we have Basilisk Gate going. They only have four cards. We're still in a pretty commanding position here, honestly. I think I start with flashback looting. Because I'd like to hit... Um... I was going to say I'd like to hit stuff to protect my, my creatures. But I think I'm discarding planes. I guess planes plus cat here. And then I'm going to play dust to dust. And flashback cat. Then they need untapped land to cast boarding party. I think it is worth it to play dust to dust. Just thinking if I should discard hawk or cat. I think I'll discard cat. Then I'll flashback cat embalm it. Sweet. Gotta watch my time now. There's Sovereign, go up to seven, geez, but we have Uro. All right, let's just start with, should I start with loot? flashback looting? I guess so. Mm, no, because I'm just not gonna, I'm just not gonna cast it this turn. I'd rather just play another threat. I can looting next turn. I might even just play all my threats here. They're chumping. I guess we could have rallied for the win. This forces them to need another cannonade. I've been taking it slow, like talking a lot, so. Definitely got to watch the, the time. What's up, Popper Tim? No boarding party. That's good. Do they have the third cannonade? The gates are the gates are good. You get to play almost the same deck that you would anyway. Just make a small sacrifice, have some colorless lands, and then you just get the gates. Okay, now they go deadly dispute away at land. Seems kind of like desperation to me. Now let's just go pump with a gate here. 
bolt it. Okay. Flashback rally. Attack. Okay, we got him. Whew, that deck can grind. That deck can really grind. I have eight and a half minutes for the third game, so I'm gonna have to try to play pretty quick here. Do we want anything for game three? Do we want to change up anything? I like three looting. I like the revokes. I like the dust to dust. It's definitely annoying for them, especially like an early revoke. Agreed, Marty B. That was a great game. They were really like, I mean, they kept cannonade three times. Guardian seems great. Palace Sentinels actually is great too. I think Cat is one of our lower impact cards. I like the journeys. I like the bolts. Bolt is good against a uh, boarding party. Okay. I'll keep this. Opponent on the mold of six. I wonder if I go garrison, discard a strands here. I think I'm going to. Getting strands in the yard is actually better than having it in hand. So, yeah, I'm going to do it. Because now I can just play, like, Seeker with Strands up to protect it. Just seems really good. Lost my phones. Oh, the Lightning? That's actually okay, I think. What if I just discard, like, Journey and Strands? I'm going to do it. Just two Strands in the yard straight away. Love it. Let's go Seeker. It's Cliffgate the way when I played at first. I don't have I don't really have time to check. I don't want to spend time to check here, but I gotta be careful to not F6 actually because I have double strands. An opponent just doing nothing here. Wow. Oh come on. Come on. That's not how you play Squadron Hawk. I actually do want to play this pre-combat because um I want to have strands up when I attack with Seeker. We consider holding the Citadel Gate to discard to like a looting that I draw. Kind of tough to say. I want to not really do anything here though. Uh, I think I'm will willing to uh, save my Seeker of the way. like I'm just going to get cannonaded. Now I think I let it go. I don't really have that many ways to turn it on anyway. Oh, red, sure. Still have strands up now for like a wrath. They're kind of stuck on mana, so dusted up is probably our best draw. Another strands. I actually like that. I could attack for two and then just leave up strands. Oh, I should have. I, I kind of messed up here. All right, I'll just play two more hawks. Leave up strands from the yard. And then next turn, leave this up. This might be better anyway. I, sh I should have played these first to hit for one more damage so that was just a mistake by me i'm gonna actually play uh the, the gate though if i draw a basilisk gate i want to be able to pump for more so they basically need double wrath now so i won't counter a bolt another citadel gate all right see if squadron hawk can go door to door i think i'll save this this citadel gate here
they need arms of our or suffocating fumes basically exactly all right let's go strands from hand oh i attacked with all my creatures oh my god i should have left one back Jeez, oh no. That was a mistake. I was just not thinking. I'm just not that good at playing this deck yet. God damn it. Now they have another one. Oh, Blightning. That was the reason to also play Gate. Oh, and I could have had Bolt, the Tilt. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus Christ. You thunder against me! You have done that yourself. She did it myself. You will not take double from back to back. They should be your at seven. And your lust for power have already oh done God. that. Not like this. I go ancestral. Oh, a couple of bad mistakes here. I'm just tilted. Okay. Well, that's really, really good. Now I'm going to play this, play this. This should be just incredible with double strands in the yard. I'm actually going to play it safe now and just leave up double strands. Just because I don't think I need to take a risk at this point with the Monarch. Just throwing it away though, making multiple mistakes back to back. Giving the opponent a chance. Just calm down, breathe. Um, now I just let that go. I don't care about my 2 4. I just care about my board not getting wrapped. Might as well strands now, right? Because they need another wrath anyway. But if they kill this, then they can still wrath these creatures. But then I guess I have to use strands. Could have even attacked with one less creature. I think we just do it. Definitely throwing this game though. Battle Screech. Okay, that's a good one. Land, untapped land into boarding party would have been brutal. That's obviously still pretty bad. Could have attacked with one less creature, but we still do have the Monarch. What a good first match to show off. Even, you know, sure, I had I played pretty poorly here, but still a pretty cool match to show off the deck. Opponent's deck is sweet. Yeah, I, I think we're probably okay too. Okay, there's a Sovereign, sure. Top land, now they can start boarding party. Gotta watch out for that too. Let's go. Inspector, Pratt Clue. Flashback Battle Screech, or do I flashback looting first? I think I flashback. I mean, I could just flashback this looting next turn with more cards in hand. I think I actually like that. And then just plan to go chump the Sovereign Bolted. I like to just get a little bit greedy with these lootings and just wait as long as possible to have better lootings. Dust to dust. It's actually really good. They've been kind of stuck on mana. They do have a treasure as well I can't forget about. The Monarch is just so strong. Could even be a third Palace Sentinel over the Guardians, honestly. Okay, they're going Ardent Elementalist, probably get back Cannonade. And they can cast it, but I have strands. So they have three mana up. Bolt this. Four minutes on my clock. It should be plenty of time here. And then I'm going to go dust it up these two bridges on my turn. Basilisk Gate. That's actually an incredibly good draw. Just can continue to wait on looting. I'm in no rush. Let's go gate. Do I pump my Thraben? Then they can just chump. 
rather just get in for extra damage. I could even just attack with two things here, because then if they bolt one, I can still have um, strands up. And I can just trade the three in for the... I can just attack for four also. I'm going to just play it ultra safe. Every time I attacked with one extra creature, I was like, damn, I wish I attacked with less creatures. Okay, Battle Screech, great draw. That will allow us to reload if we need to. Just trade here. They have a cannonade in hand. Strands hell of a card though. Another Faithless Looting. Lead on that. Discard a land, a land, I think, at this point. I'll save this Battle Screech probably to just to just uh, refuel. I could also discard Looting Land. I'm actually going to do that. Play Thraven Inspector. Play Gate. Pump here. We know they have Cannonade and two other cards. If they go Bolt it, that's fine. I just let that happen. Again, we know about Cannonade. I don't even know if I need to attack for one. I don't think I need to. I, I think there's no real downside at this point. Maybe I'll eat my words, but just attack for one. I definitely should win this match if I had played well. Reaping the Graves, three spells cast, but they only have one creature in their graveyard. Wow. Reaping the Graves, strong card too, but oh wait. Oh no, they have Ardent Elementalist. I can't even tell what happened. It's hard to tell on Magic Online. I, I can't use any more time. Wow. Good card. We know they still have Cannonade. They're going Sovereign. Two and a half minutes. Don't want a timeout here for sure. It's hard to like always leave up strands. Crack Clue. There's Inspector. There's Palace Sentinels. They're at eight. All right, let's go. Pump here, play Guardian, they still have Cannonade, just attack for five, they can start looping, they go to three, draw Bolt, nope. So what, they can play like another Sovereign or something. Pump here, minute 53. Could be fine to just pump Guardian, they need like Terminate now. Another, oh, Ardent Elementalist. Get back Galvanic Blast. So they're going to just try to double blast. They have one card in hand and it's Cannonade. So that doesn't do it. I still just win with this now. So we know their hand is Blast plus Cannonade. Blast target themselves. I'll let it resolve. They say GG's. That was a great match. Great, great match. That was, that was really close. The Plumbing deck was really impressive. Sovereign was a little bit clunky, but being a flying blocker was huge. You don't need the metal craft. Yeah, that was a, that was a really fun match.
definitely made definitely made a couple mistakes there. But Bowie is actually pretty hard to play if you're not used to it because there's a lot of intricacies like sometimes playing creatures before attacking. How many creatures do you attack with when you want to play strands? Because opponents can take line, like bolting your untapped creatures and then wrathing, which opponent was making really good use of. But I made that huge mistake when I attacked with all my hawks and luckily didn't get too punished. Still was able to win the match. A win's a win. Let's go round two. All right, after an exciting round one that I tried to punt, but we, we got there. Um, we're gonna keep this hand. This hand's fine. A little clunky here, but we have Gate Gate, Seeker of the Way, Removal Spells, opponent goes Evolving Wilds, Hawk, not a bad draw. I'll try to play a little bit faster here. I was taking my time. As Goblin's Keeper Troll says, yeah, we were taking, Taking our sweet time there. Discarding those uh, strands early was pretty sick that last game. Evolving Wilds. They must have another Ash Barons in hand, the way, they, the way they sequence this. That's my guess. Could be Is It Prowess, could be Blue Black Fae. We're not sure yet. We need we don't have enough information. We've seen Evolving Wilds, Island Island Brainstorm. Could be Blue Red Bay. You know, could be a fair amount of decks. But we'll find out shortly here. We'll see what we draw. Re Resolving Hawk is really good, but we don't really have space to put a bunch of hawks in our hand. Hmm. Now I now that's temp that, that's tempting me to resolve Hawk. Because if it's a Fey deck, Hawk is almost like better to resolve than Seeker because you get all the card advantage. And I can just discard strands. I could also think about getting Triple Hawk, discarding Battle Screech and strands, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I'll just discard the strands. It's like the best card to discard. Obviously, we just need to draw lands with this hand, which we have not done yet. But we're doing okay. We know they have at least one blue spell in their deck. Let's see. It is blue black bay. Okay. Well, strands is not going to be that good, but resolving hawk is really good because they can't really counter like both of these hawks now effectively. So. Oh, Suffocating Fumes? Oh my god. Missing lands here is exceptionally bad. I could just even bolt this or journey it so I don't get hit with a ninja early. So if I play Seeker and they go Snuff Out Seeker, Attack Ninja, it's just so bad for me. I'm just going to be mana efficient and journey this. Attack for one. We know about fumes in their hand. Strands is actually pretty bad in this matchup. They have like cast down, snuff out, fumes. Strands doesn't really stop much. It just stops them from from dealing less damage. It can help protect the monarch. They also have thorn though, so strands probably coming out in this matchup. There's so many red decks in the meta, but there are decks where Strands is mediocre. Cycle Ashburns. Get Swamp. Get Island. Oh no. That's not good. The sum matched, sum mismatched island combo. That's brutal. This is also brutal, just this this draw here. I'm gonna attack and just play a hawk because I don't want my seeker really to just get like counterspelled, I guess. I guess they can just fumes end of turn, but that's fine if they do. I'm gonna say no. I don't want to discard here. We're gonna lose this game if we like can't find any lands. That's why I think Echoing Decay. That's so they still have fumes and they chose the not fumes there. Wow, it's kind of greedy. That's why I kind of want 22 or 23 lands instead of 21. Because 
you can get insane value out of your like hawks and lootings and stuff like that, but you just need to hit your land drops. Okay, I mean, maybe I can come back. I could play Seeker because it doesn't get fumes. They're probably gonna have another removal spell for it. But I can kill this, threaten to attack with Seeker. Seeker doesn't die to fumes at least, so I don't know. It's gonna be tough here. They're likely just gonna be able to easily protect the Monarch. They probably have like multiple cast downs and snuff outs. This was this was pretty unfortunate. Team J Bro. Yo, I'm I'm not coming to KubeCon, but I'm planning on going to Atlanta. I'm playing a bunch of RCQs coming up. Hey Ninja, so let's just go to the next one. We're just so far behind. They have the Monarch, they have Counterspell, they're hitting with Ninja. We kept a two lander and just never drew a land. So, that sucks. Good sideboard here, though. I feel like Electricery is okay. Deals with Spell Stutter Sprite. Moving Circuit Hacker, if they have that, and um, Fairy Seer in multiples. Seems good to me. Journey is fine. I think Power Sentinels, I think it's actually okay. I think sideboarding like this seems fine. Cat actually is, Cat is actually pretty good against them. Because they have targeted removal spells, like cast down, snuff out. They have fumes and some other rats, but we can just try to not overcommit. We can still side out one cat. We can side out one bolt. But I think I like bolt. I could side out one power sentinels. Not sending out guardian. I'll just side out one cat because it's a little bit low power. We got wrecked that game, but again, we just didn't function at all. Like sometimes you keep a two lander and you just don't have lands. You don't draw lands, so it's just what happened there. This hand's awkward, but I'll keep it. I think I'm actually just gonna lead on gate into mountain seeker and then looting on three. I, I think I like that. So starting to get gates down is good. I don't need to looting quite yet. Relic, sure. Palace Sentinel, that's actually a really good draw. It makes me wanna like, I could have sided out multiple copies of looting here. I wanna, okay, now I'm just going to easily slam Hawk, slam Citadel Gate. Next turn, try to slam Sentinels. Seems like a great line. If I can get all three, that way I won't draw any. I don't even have to discard. Somebody commented on one of my posts or videos and said, oh, you should play a couple of Boros Guild Gates instead of the thriving type gates, the Citadel and Cliff Gates, and I was like, they were like, it's less clicks. But I was like, but these help represent something. I'm not too worried about the clicks. Okay, I'm gonna just resolve this. If they go double removal spell, take the Monarch, so be it. It's gonna be kind of hard for them to do. They need like double snuff out, basically. Or I guess they could have snuff out cast down. They could do it. Single removal spell on palace sentinels forces me to chump with hawk, but that's fine. Cast down. Why did I have to say it? Do they have the do they have the snuff? Looks like they do not. What are, maybe they sided out snuff, at least in some number, where they don't they don't have it potentially. We haven't seen it yet. All right, they might have Counterspell up. I think I just lead on Journey. If they counter this, I'm probably just going Bolt because I just want to make sure that I'm not losing the Monarch to anything other than a Thorn.
probably will stop playing basics at this point. But I think playing another gate there is good. It makes Bathless gate a lot better, which is critical in this matchup, it seems. Preordain into Evolving Wilds. No crack right now. It went one bottom, one top. Okay, now they crack. Sure. They're relicking us. I don't really care. Let's just go Thraven, Seeker, Hawk. Could get Arms of Adar here or something, but what are you going to do? Probably just going to go looting, discard looting. This is really making me want to side out more lootings. They can't take the Monarch, though. They're, they're just going to lose. And looting, discard, looting, and land at this point. <laughs> the old Ancestral the hard way. Just draw a bunch of cards and then discard the ones you don't want. Oh, wow, they're doing nothing? Rally? That's such a good draw. I mean, that can go Rally, flashback, Rally. They have three cards in hand. I don't think I need to flash it back this turn. Just lead on looting. I can also find Pyroblast and stuff. I'm not going to discard the Rally, though. I'll discard, like, looting land here. Spell Thutter Sprite. All right, I'll just try to bolt that. Nice. Getting my looting. Go rally. You can save these for a, a reload here. With seven five lifelink. Secret of the way, actually pretty good card. Fumes? Sure. We still have the rally in the graveyard. The monarch is just like what's doing it here though. This is really wanting me wanting making me want to play third um third monarch creature. Yeah, I started out one looting, I just didn't side out two lootings. But we're still obviously doing fine. So I can go Screech, Flashback Screech, then they need another Wrath. I'm not Basilisk gating then, but I do get to double pump this. I'm going to do it. And then I have two blockers back for Ninja. I guess three with Cat. And then I'll just attack for four. Dodge that Relic nicely with the Battle Screech. It is still worth it to bring in Relic against uh, these Bully decks. Ooh, a Trickery. I could have tapped differently and held that up for like if I drew a Bolt or something. All right, they just didn't have anything to stop us. That was a turn four Monarch unanswered. It's just, that's the perfect example of why Monarch is not that fun. We went turn four Monarch, they're like, okay, crap, I can't take the Monarch back, but I should still play out this game. Then we played out like seven, eight more turns, but it was like they were never in that game. It just leads to really bad play patterns in 1v1. It wasn't designed for 1v1. It was de designed for multiplayer. It, it shouldn't be legal in the format. I think the format would just be better without it. But I am not part of the PFP, popper format panel, so my opinion doesn't really matter. All right, let's just go second looting out cat in. As we saw that game, the entire time, it was just like looting was sitting in our hand from turn one. And I was on turn one, I was like, mm, I don't really want to cast looting. I don't really get great value. I'd rather cast my the front half of the spell than cast the back half. And then it was like, oh, I'll just wait on looting, wait on looting, wait on looting. And like having two is fine. But um, in this matchup, we're not really discarding strands early, which is the best thing to discard the looting. So I do like siding out strands and two lootings here. So we're learning, we're learning. Yeah, I mean, Fall from Favor was terrible. It was just atrocious. 
We'll keep this. Clunky, but we have double pyroblasts. We have cat. This looks pretty good. If they turn two ninjas, we can just kill it on our turn two. This sounds really good, actually. We'd love to draw untapped land. This feels like a ninja of the deep hours. We'll see. It is. I'm definitely just going to pyroblast that. Play garrison pass while they're tapped out. Don't want to let them protect that. One untapped land, please, would go a long, long way. Next turn, I could like play a two drop or maybe cat with pyroblast up. We'll see. Fairy Seer, huh? That's the one they had. I think I like. I think I like trying to play Hawk here. It's going to be hard for them to counter. They need like a four spike or something. I guess I can't really get all the Hawks though. This is interesting. I want to play one of my two drops to be mana efficient because I don't get to leave up Pyro anyway. But if I play Hawk, I can only get one Hawk and then they could counter that one. They have to also kill Hawk to attack through it for another ninja, so I do like playing Hawk here. Okay. This has been a fun match too. They have the snuff, okay. Let's see if they have another ninja. We do have double pyro, but we've played a tap land every single turn of the game, including a bounce land, so. Yeah, our mana is a little rough here. Our 10 top lands costing us. Again, just one untapped land plus garrison goes so far. Oh man, are they going to have ninja leave up counter? Blue Black Bay often plays only three ninja of the deep hours, no moon circuit. So a lot of times they don't have a lot of protection. Okay, that was a really good draw because now I can go journey they're gonna go counter i'm gonna pyroblast it and then i still get the ninja they don't really have pressure at that point i can just play another tap land or another garrison Ooh, they're not they're not doing anything All right now i have to play cliff gate i want to leave up pyro if they countered there and i went pyro i would have obviously just played garrison but i can play it next turn kind of want to just counter this I guess I get spell centered here. Not ideal. But then I can resolve multiple hawks. I'm just going to wait. That was a close decision there to go for the pyro. Yeah, I'd say Chatterstorm was worse than fall from favor but both were really bad i had some screenshots if you look back at my twitter where there was like a board state with three creatures out and like seven fall from favor favors to play i'm exaggerating a little but it was like three creatures and like five fall from favors or something just because we both were playing them back and forth to take the monarch it was pretty silly i can journey that but i don't think i need to let's go hawk with double pyro up seems great they're going to go Spell Thutter. I'm going to Pyro it. Write them like a book. And then we still have Pyro up. They've already used two ninjas. Just playing a top land every single turn. But Balance Lands are still good here because... We've only drawn four lands total this game, but we're about to have six mana in play in two turns. <laughs> but yeah, they're they're good at grinding. All right, I'm gonna let it resolve. I'm not that scared of a, a fairies here at this point. Sure, they get to scry, but they're fighting through Squadron Hawk. I think I just messed up. I guess I could have gotten two Hawks. I thought I was gonna have to discard again. 
it's likely not going to matter. I doubt they're going to try to counter this, but we'll see if it if it ends up mattering. Palace Sentinels. Can't play that quite yet. Just go Hawk Hawk here. If they counter, I'll, I'll counter back. Squadron Hawk is so good against the Fade Dex. I hate playing against it from the Fade side. It just feels like it's just like they have so much inevitability with all their Hawks. I could play Sacred Cat here. Is there a blue spell that I'm going to want to counter like right now? I don't think so. Just save the Pyro for later. I'm just going to go Cat. Worst case, they spell better, but looks like they don't have another one. That was a good draw. Or maybe they had it. Who knows? But are they going to put three on the bottom? No. Dispel. Okay. It deals with our Pyro. Probably. I'll just trade for these fairies here. Oh, not suffocating fumes, please. That would be so bad. Oh, Gurmag Angler. Go Journey to Nowhere, the Gurmag. I think it's a little greedy to just try to jam Sentinels here. I think I'm going to go Seeker of the Way, play this Cliffgate, pass. We know about Dispel. They have Dispel plus Blank. Maybe I should have just gone for it there. Cast down the Seeker of the Way. Okay, I'm really happy with this, actually. I was worried about, like, removal spells on these Hawks, attack, take the Monarch, and then I lose, but... I'm feeling better about... Oh, wow, I'm feeling great now. So we know their last card is Dispel. I might not be able to play this here, though. Let's go block here. One removal spell and I'm good. Seeker of the way. Because I can't deal with this fairies here right now. No attack. Play Seeker of the way. I'm not going to play Palace Sentinels, I don't think. They go play Seeker, play Palace Sentinels. They go attack, take a Monarch. Draw an extra card. It's pretty bad for me. Wanna wait. We know their hand is dispel only. Oh, what's up, Pumpkin Queen? Okay, they just go fetch to thin, get second swamp. We know their hand is still just dispel only. So we're in a good spot. Ooh, I can take a funny line here, especially now drawing Basilisk Gate, I think I'm safe. I'm gonna go. Pyroblast this right now, they might go, they might play their Dispel. Then I get to pump my Seeker, Lifelink. 3-3 three, three Lifelink from the Pyroblast. And then I go... Do I have enough to 3, so 4, 5, 6, 7. This costs 5, and then 6, 7 to, to Bask with Gate something, attack for a million damage, draw one extra card. It's got to be the line. I blast this. See if they dispel it. I assume they will. I can also just still not play Palace Sentinels. I can just go Basilisk Gate, pump my Sacred Cat, attack with both for a million lifelink. Not risk giving them the Monarch. I think I like that better, honestly. Little Uro here. Eight lifelink. Nerdy Steve. So now I'm liking I'm liking the format a fair amount. I think gates are cool. I think they're a good addition to the format, actually. Um the red decks are really strong. They can kind of nut draw you sometimes, which can be frustrating, but yeah, format's cool. 420 dragon. If anything, you're gonna get these banned. <laughs> I'm taking inspiration from you, jamming gate decks all day. I have a couple other gapers I just haven't gotten around to yet, time-wise, but nice. 2-0, let's go round three. Let's do it.
All right, welcome to round three. We're two and zero here. We're gonna keep this hand. A lot of lands, but um, you know we have a totally functional draw here. Draven is good with these draws because you go like turn one Draven, turn two Crack Clue, and you're spending your mana. Wouldn't be surprised if we're against Hot Dogs or Burn. Okay, we drew a spell, so that's a good start. All right, looks like likely Burn. But it could be hot dogs with like the one forgotten cave. I'll attack here. Not worried about like a killing fiend, reckless charger, or anything. Just crack a clue at the end of their turn. What are they doing? They're just saving their burn spells because they have like they're flooded. I don't understand. Cliff gate. The attack, play seeker. Probably play Boros Garrison. Could just start playing Gates out too, in case I draw a way to pump, but I think playing Boros Garrison is just better. It gives me more untapped lands to hit on the future draws. So now I have two untapped lands in hand. Bolt Seeker right now, sure. If this is burn, I think our burn matchup is pretty reasonable because we have four Seeker, four uh, Uro in the deck. And three one missionary sideboard. It is burn. Okay. We don't have an answer for that right now, so it could be a problem, but they only have three cards and we're at 20. Screech, flashback, screech. And then I can attack for how much? 15 next turn? Oh no, I have four creatures. They're all gonna be four power, 16 in the air. I mean, Screech Flashback Screech has got to be better than Palace Sentinels here. I can just go play Rally, attack with all of them, then kill you on the next turn, kill you on turn six. They have to kill us with the three cards they have. They probably, they could easily have another land the way they've been playing this game. I could have gone Palace Sentinel that turn, Screech, Flashback, Screech next turn, and then Rally, Flashback, Rally on turn six, because that would still be a win also. So then I would have drawn one extra card. Now, I guess we just attack first. No reason to get ahead of ourselves here. They might block. If they don't block, are they in trouble? game okay. so they have to kill us they could do it there's nothing else we could really do i mean we could have drawn one card with palace sentinels if we decided to play that Oh, that was you, 420 Dragon? I thought that was somebody else, and you were playing a slightly different blue-red playlist. We'll see if we get burned out here. Skewer us for five. With double Thermochimus, it adds two to every spell. It's a lot. And they're playing spells here. They could have double Fire Blast. That would be 10 more... That would be 12 damage. Looks like they have it. Wow. Well, the turn I... Well, I'll draw my card next turn, because the turn I played the first Battle Screech, I actually probably should have played Palace Sentinels. Because I would have drawn one extra card, maybe at this point two extra cards. It wouldn't have ended up mattering, we were just a little bit too slow there. I still think this is a fantastic matchup for us. We have quad strands, triple lone missionary, and lootings to find them. Plus we have cat. Like everything is good in the deck. I think I just bring in just these three side out Thravens. Thravens are kind of 
a little bit clunky. Surprised we lost that, but Thermal Alchemist deals a lot of damage. Again, it was a mistake, I think, playing the Battle Screech over the Sentinels. I was just thinking, depending on what we draw, what if we draw like a Bolt or something, we could kill. I think that it was actually fine to play the Battle Screech, but Palace Sentinels was probably the optimal play. All right, let's do this. Again, we have Seeker and Cat, which are both, both seem really good. All right, flip the opponent's sideboard, and we'll be back for game two against Burn here. All right, game two. Would you like to play first? Yes. All right. hand it's just not good enough i don't do anything on the first two turns i don't have a lone missionary i can strands on three screech on four it's just not it's just not good enough all right we're going to five that's okay though man i think we keep this on five I think if I draw a land, I can easily win with this hand. I think going to four is going to be harder to win than drawing a land with this hand. Put back Rally for sure. I can put back Hawk too. Obviously Hawk is good, but I have plenty to do with my mana, assuming I can draw a land. So. Untap land off the top. Puts us in a really good position. Definitely just jamming this. If they want to kill it, they can kill it. And then I'll just embalm it. It's honestly a good draw for not drawing a land. Searing Blade the Cat. Land is good. There we go. They need like another Searing Blaze. Next turn I can Lone Mish. We can do this. I mean, our five was good. Prismatic Strands is very good in the matchup. Especially if we draw like a Faithless Looting here or something. Just escape Uro. Turn two. They're probably like, what is Embalm? What is this cat? Dark Wolf, what's up? Embalm resolves. They could ignore this cat now, but maybe that gets complicated if I love missionary. Card's good. Definitely not blocking. I think I'm safe to journey this though. Skewer the cat. Okay, this is good. I can journey this and then win Mish the turn after. Bounce land, regular land, any any land. Play Forgotten Cave, interesting. It means they probably have three spells in hand. Still gonna journey this. I'm not worried about like triple bolt fire blast. If they have that, they have that. Playing one missionary, we take damage off the sphere anyway. Yeah, but this card is just still a good card, right? It's still just like almost like a two and a half for one against Burn. Yeah, I mean, they did have the Searing Blaze, but they had to spend two cards to do to deal with a one one cat. I don't think they're double queuing or anything. They're just taking it slow here. Just playing to Lone Mish next turn. 
Again, I just can't play one of these threats and then have them like go like bolt, bolt, hit you for three with Swiss Spear. It's just too much. As, as long as I don't die right now, for me, it has to be exactly triple bolt fire blast. Please, please, opponent. Not like this. Um, I think I do like Missionary over Dawnbreaker Cleric in this meta specifically, just because there's so much burn in the meta. All right, I want to play Seeker, but I think Lone Missionary is safe. If if I don't play this, I feel like I could easily just die if I play this. So I have to play this first. Go up to 11. They have two cards in hand. I don't know what their cards are. It's probably like a Fire Blast. And they concede the game. Wow. Multi five, two top lands, no problem. A row? Okay. No change. I still don't really like Thraven. I think Palace Sentinels is actually good. Guardian's slow, but it's incredible inevitability. Maybe we just don't need it. Maybe I should have cited that out, have two Thravens. But I think Palace Sentinels actually is good. Because Palace Sentinels plus Strand seems like a good way to win. I don't know if I need this. To have another cheap card to help enable Screech and Strands. This does seem like it gives a lot of inevitability, but it costs four mana. Turn it back. We got them all. This was a dual land, maybe, but probably not even. I guess we had to have looting into discard Strands into Play Seeker. That's really good, but we can't keep with what we have. All right, let's keep. I think I just put back one of these lands. I'm probably leaning on a top land on one. Yeah, just put back a top land. Now I can just curve out. I won't have a red spell. No, I actually need both up on two in case they turn to Thermal Alchemist. I need to play my red source here. This is classic popper where you, it's tempting to like turn one Thraben here, but I think the correct line is Cliffgate because if they play like a turn two Thermal Alchemist, we're going to want to kill it. Exactly. And if they, if I played planes, next turn I would have to go Cliffgate. They untap with Thermo or in this case, Firebrand Archer. And I think that's a bad situation. So now we get to go, we have our tapped red source down. Then we still get to play Inspector on two. And now we can go looting discard strands next turn or just leave up strands next turn even. That might be good. We have a lot of lines now. Okay, well, there's the Thermo. That's a problem. I have a couple options. Kind of a sick line is play planes, play squadron hawk, get three hawks, then play faithless looting, discarding strands. But I think I like just play planes pass. They're probably going to play a sorcery speed burn spell. They don't have any more mana. And then I can crack clue if they really want to play an instant speed burn spell at end of their turn, they can do that. I think I'll just pass the strands up this turn, try to get maximum value out of it. Maybe that's a little bit greedy of a line. Could have gone for the hawk looting discard two hawks also. That would have been interesting. They just go like bolt your swiss bolt my thraben right now i blow them out with strands looks like they're gonna play a spell let's let them go for it nice this is like one of the best prismatic strands i've ever seen counter your chain lightning block your swiss spear you don't get to deal me another damage thermo right now wow still have strands in the yard 
that was a pretty obvious leave up strands. I think an expert opponent may not have taken this line, but they did. Let's go Hawk, get three Hawks, then play Faith is Looting, and we still have strands up here. Decide if I want to Boros Garrison before I play Looting to potentially discard a Plains. Then I can keep Gates to have extra Gates in play. I think I'm going to do it. Because now I can discard Plains Hawk potentially, depending on what I draw off this Looting. This deck is feeling really powerful. Oh wow, there's a Rally. Now I can actually take a different line. I'm definitely discarding a land. I could discard a land, one hawk. Then next turn I play two hawks plus citadel gate. And then on turn six I go untap land, rally, rally. just kind of tempting to discard like both lands so I have more gas, but I don't think I actually need it. I'm going to take this line. Pingos, we're still at 18. Oh, what's up, Milk Daddy? Yeah, this line seems sweet. We still have strands in the yard, so we're not really at risk to dying right now. We're going Chain Lightning on my Squadron Hawk. I'm just going to strands this. I, then I don't take any damage from this. I save my Squadron Hawk. I'm just going to do it. They don't get to deal me another damage with this right now either. I'm just going. Oh, and then they go instant speed searing blaze on the Thraven. Well, now my hawk is still going to survive and block your swift spear. I think opponent messed up huge here. They walked out on three damage. Two cards left for the opponent. I mean, I'm not in trouble, per se, but next turn they can attack with Swiss Spear. Oh, I guess we... I guess I guess Strands would have resolved anyway, so they couldn't have attacked with Swiss Spear. You're right, Mayor Empire. You guys are right. You guys are, you guys are right. Chain Lightning is going to ask if I want to pay two. It's like, yeah, I mean, I do, but I can't. We still kind of need to draw something. Raven. Hmm. At 13, they have two cards. If I attack for one down to 19, and then if I double rally, that's only 15 damage. So I think I kind of like play planes, play Thraven, play double hawk. Because I can't win next turn. If I go hawk hawk, tap land, and then I go rally rally, that's only 15 damage. Then they go to five. It's not enough. I'm going to take this line. I could also crack a clue instead. But I think I like just still playing double hawk. Attack for one. I could potentially chump Swiss Spear here. I 
again, I didn't play the top lane now because I lost the creature, right? I wasn't able to win with double rally anyway. So there, if I can't win next turn, then there's no point. Yeah, I could have cracked Clue instead of playing the first Hawk, or like at the start of my turn, crack Clue. But I think I still like committing to the board, because if I draw something reasonable next turn, I get to go like, you know, play some, play Rally, maybe play another creature, attack for a bunch, and then Rally again on turn seven to win. At least that's the plan. Another Citadel Gate. All right, so now... I can looting, but I think I just go crack glue, rally, attack in the air, leave back a chump walker, or even attack with all, maybe. Let's go crack. Sacred cat. Now that is tempting. I can attack with all, but they have like a free block with the Swiss Spear on my Raven. I attack for three down to 16. I still only have 15 damage in the air next turn with double rally. So I'm thinking about going like Crack Clue right now, play Sacred Cat, play Gate. Attack for three in the air. What I could do is I could attack with everything, but again, they get a free block on Thraven, which is just not good. Well, they have a Rift Bolt suspended. Is there any benefit to going Rally right now? Hit for nine. I don't think so. I guess the line still is crack clue. If I draw a bolt, I'll just bolt Thermo Alchemist. Attack for three in the air, play Sacred Cat, play Tap Land. Next turn, somehow try to double rally to win. That's all I got, right? Would have actually been good. Well, there's, there's nothing I can do, right? I don't have any other lines. I need them to, to miss, I think. It looks like we're just dead. They're just snapping it off. Yeah, Rift Bolt us. So we go to six, then we go to two. And they probably have a burn spell in hand. So they have to have land, land, or land creature in hand. They have something like, oh, they have Fire Blast. Man, that was close. I don't think I don't think I had any other lines there. The turn I played the Hawks, I could have cracked Clue earlier, but I don't think that would have ended up mattering. We just needed like the Seeker of the Ways early or the Lone Missionaries and more strands. I think opponent did not necessarily play that well. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just wrong, but they played right into that first prismatic strands. But uh, we didn't we didn't quite get there. GG's two and one. See everyone for round four. All right, welcome to round four. We're against Tart. Tart is the mono blue master. Let me close this. We're gonna keep this hand. I'd be surprised if they're not on mono blue. Fay, we'll see. Yep. 
It could be on blue black, but they, they play some other decks sometimes. Tart's a really strong player. Unfortunately, we don't have untapped planes here, but kind of the cost of this deck. Okay, it's blue black or blue red fey counterspell. I think I want to resolve Squadron Hawk. Hmm. Oh, there's a Faithless Looting. That's pretty good too, but resolving Squadron Hawk seems really good. Could even get two more Hawks just to make sure to resolve more of them. Can also resolve Seeker of the Way, but that just gets bolted. Resolving Hawk is best. Now it's just a choice of how many Hawks do I get? And do I want to discard any cards? Look, I could discard a Rally because this won't be good for a while. And then I make sure I have two Hawks. I think just one is fine. Could discard the Rally. All right, I'm going to get two. I don't think I need double rally in this game, at least at this point. I might need double hawk. I think there's a decent Is It Prowess deck, but it's probably not playing um, Just Guy Elder. I think it's most likely playing like, oh, it's Blue Black Bay. There's Untapped Land too, nice. I think the blue red decks are probably just playing Kill and Fiend or just blue red Bay, I think is better. Um, a couple options here. Spell Stutter Sprite is annoying. For sure. Could just lead on Faithless Looting. They're going to have so much removal in their deck. Could lead on Hawk. Then they might just counter that. I'll just lead on Hawk. Yes. Get the last Hawk. Fate those looting. I only have one white source right now, which is really, really costing me. I can still just discard double cat though. Maybe I draw a planes. Could discard Hawk Cat, but I think I discard Double Cat. I'm gonna go no attack here. I think. I mean, if they want to like spend a removal spell here, I guess that's fine. Really want to draw planes. That's our best draw for sure. I mean, I guess, but also just killing them with Kill and is good, and there it is, nice. So now I'm going to go play Planes, play Hawk, probably play another Hawk. I could also just Embalm two cats, because they can't be countered. That might just be too cute. They've shown they don't want to counter these Hawks. Just keep playing them. Am I going to get like Fumes here? Spell Starter Sprite, the last one. Sure. I think I just go no attack again. If I go attack with one and they go like double removal spell, hit, bring back Spell Starter Sprite, that's going to be pretty bad. I was thinking about resolving the first hawk and then embalming a cat, and I guess I should have done that. Tart's a really good player, so I know he's gonna wait on the counter spells. Play another land, only four cards in hand. I could go triple block, force them to use a removal spell on hawk. I don't hate it. But then they just get to eat one. They they haven't had a ninja yet, it's just not. So 
but they still have Counterspell. I'm going to play a Thraven. If it resolves, then I'm just going to involve my cat, main two. Counterspell. Now I'm going to go for Guardian of the Guild Pack. They need another counter. They have it. Okay. I'm going to go no attacks. They ha Again, they don't have a ninja yet, so they have to top deck one. How is Sentinels? I mean, I think I'm down to jam. Let's play Thraven first. And then play Palace Sentinels. I don't think it's getting much better for me. I have Triple Hawk to protect the Monarch. Nice. No attacks. Boros is generally favored against the Fade X, but it's not like un unwinnable for them, basically. I can still lose. Four mana, snuff out. A hawk by paying four mana. Okay, so they're gonna go maybe another removal spell, attack with on a hawk, attack with both of these, take the monarch. But then, okay, yeah, they they can't, they can't. They 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 were hoping to top deck another removal spell. The chart does not want to play out a long game against monarch, against this deck. Get the pyros. Side out the strands. Also get the electric breeze. What did I side out last time? Oh yeah, we, we came to the conclusion that double weeding was the way to go. I like that sideboard plan. It seems great. Let's jam. Tart does seem to have cool versions of those cards. Cool counter spell. At least like a swag counter spell plus the old border preordain. All right, game two against Tart. Did we mulligan that first game. No. And keep this too. A little bit clunky with planes into garrison, but it's fine. Now I can just go Cliffgate, Planes, Seeker on two, and then Boros Garrison back to Planes on three or later. I like that. Cycle Ashburns get Swamp. I play Swamp and play nothing. I think I'm down to play Seeker. I mean, it just gets cast down, but. So what? Uh, Got to start fighting through. Uh, flash and stutter, sure. Still fine playing the secret here though. If they want a ninja hit, then snuff out plus ninja hit. That's actually kind of bad. Now I don't really have an answer for that yet. Pyro, okay. So now I just go Pyro that, play Boros Garrison, pass. That was obviously a good draw to draw an answer for that. And now we have an Electric Reef for their Spell Thirst, right? And they're stuck on two lands. So I think it's favoring us here at this point. So we're going to go Flash and Stutter or Augur. Yeah, that should definitely jam Augur there. It's not over by any means. I mean, we're still kind of behind actually at this point. Now that they, now that I thought they were just going to pass with two up, and I thought then they, I thought they were going to go end of turn spell that are electric re. But no. Oh, this is actually, this is actually, I just got turned on to this. Um, the color is all off because of the green screen, but it's an anchor steam from San Francisco. Um, just like an easy drinking. Really good beer. They go Augur Concede. I don't know if they missed or if they just had nothing and no lands, but 
I feel like I feel like if they had a hit on that auger, they could keep playing. Because if they top deck a land next turn, maybe they get back into it. Our hand was bad, so. Well, Magic Online not letting us draw more cards, but three and one, we beat Blue Black Bay twice. Let's see if we can four one this thing. I'm a classic four one player, so I gotta I gotta do it. I've had actually some bad results recently, um, so hopefully I can four one this year. We'll see. All right, welcome to the fifth and final round against Gutta. Would you like to play first? Yes, I would. Not keep. Triple Gate, Mountain, Thraven, Thraven, Hawk. Great hand. Got us on a mulligan to six. Just going to go Cliff Gate. Pass. See what we're up against. We want to go Tap Lane, Thraven on two, or Hawk on two. Ooh, the Menace, huh? I'm going to go with Raven Tap Land here. I don't want them to just eat my Squadron Hawk by playing any enchantment. And if they want to eat the Raven, then they can. But I'm going to play it to get my clue. Death Blade's pretty annoying. We don't have that many answers, but we do have four strands, so that's decent. So annoying when you just don't have the answer for this and then they just eat they just like abyss you starting on turn one with this card. It's like it feels so bad when you just can't kill a one mana one one. It's like illegal blocks. Sorry, Moto. Alright, I can crack now. Determine if I want to play another top land or another Thraven that just gets eaten. Sucks that I, I think I'm just going to go Cliffgate Pass, crack on their turn. I kind of like scaring them into not playing a good aura here because I could have like a bolt. Obviously I would have just played it on my turn, but they don't know that. I want them to be scared into like taking it slow here. Yeah, I'm just going in. All right, I need to draw Bolter Journey, but now they probably have protection up as well. Yeah, no doubt. This is this is mono white heroic. I call it the menace because I lose to it a lot. <laughs> and I think it's I think it's a pretty bad deck. It's really inconsistent. I think it folds to a lot of hate. And it's it has powerful draws, certainly, but yeah, I just think the deck is not that good. And I lose to it a lot, so. Oh my god, come on. Brutal. Alright. Now I could play Basilisk Gate, play Hawk, play Faithless Looting, then play Thraven Inspector. And I guess that's my line, right? I could also play double hawk here. Start getting in. I think I like the Faithless Looting line. Maybe find a Strands. Man. Just discard some lands. Play a Thraven. It's going to be tough here. We just aren't really doing anything. And again, they're just they just have the abyss out right now. Not really like we could just afford to just not play creatures ever. Drawing the second hawk there was pretty brutal. That is a reason a lot of people get this deck, because it's like basics and the cheapest cards possible, but there's other cheap options that I think are strong too. All right, so they're eating Thraven. You can trade with a warrior with Hawk. It's actually interesting. I might want to do that. How am I winning this game, honestly? 
I don't know. Maybe with like a Guardian. Or Strand plus Monarch. I think I just try to buy time. I don't think I'm winning by like playing multiple creatures and aggroing them out. I go crack clue right now. Okay, there's both. I mean, I'm sure they have protection, right? There's no question that they have protection up. There's no chance. I think I can just go flashback Faithless Looting to dig deeper. Journey to nowhere, okay. I discard Rally Cliff Gate here. Maybe I want another gate in order to like kill fast with the Guardian potentially. Definitely discarding Rally. Next turn, what am I doing? Just trying to play Journey and Bolt. I think I can discard Basic actually. Yeah, I played a I played a land this turn. That was turn five. I think keeping the gate is actually okay. They play a land, they play a death blade. I don't care about the lifelink. I I think I'm gonna be able to deal with this, likely. They need double protection now, they have two cards left, but they haven't been doing anything. They they could easily have double protection here. Palace Sentinels. I think we need to try to deal with their board first. I'll lead on journey on this, see if it resolves. Unlikely to. Parametra's Blessing. Alright, that doesn't work. This is just combat damage. Maybe they're just doing it to hope we like concede it in response or something. Not sure, but fine with that. Now they, they have one card in hand. Next turn we're threatening to go Sentinels plus Hawk, which is actually pretty good here. They eat another creature. I wonder if I was not supposed to play this. This They have no protection left. They have zero cards. They're hitting for one, eating our Hawk. That's fine. I mean, I can just still take the Monarch here. Seems pretty good, actually. Have two creatures in play. They need, like, a protection from white in order to take the Monarch. And they can't even eat Palace Sentinels right now. And there's Strands. Wow. So, stick to the plan, I guess. Can't play Sentinel to leave up Strands quite yet, but I can go make some blocks. And then leave up strands next turn. And there's journey. Nice. I think we're doing it. Gate is only sorcery, by the way, also. Just so you know. Chat. I've had people make that mistake. It's if you haven't played with the card, it's 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 tough to realize also. So you can not gate at instant speed. No attack from that. Oh they okay, they're gonna block on Hawk and just eat it, but I can just Chump. I can't actually eat this because they can just deal damage to the hawk first. Wait. Do they not provoke? They said no to it? Oh, they didn't. I thought they said no to it for some reason. It's kind of hard to tell on Magic Online. Now I should just be in an incredible position. Another gate. Obviously, I'm leaving up strands no matter what, so I have three mana to work with. So I'm just going to journey this. 
I don't know if I need to. I can play Hawk and then just plan to play Strands. I think I just Journey. And then next turn I can start double gating. This is an example of like really, really powerful low opportunity cost. So I'm going to strands to protect the monarch. Sick. Hey, Beastmaster, thanks for the sub. Eight months. Appreciate that. Thanks for the support. It's awesome. Ethereal armor. I mean, they're probably decently, but I think now it's over. Strands is just way too much. This card is just so good. I wanted to play the challenge today, but I had a couple things come up I wasn't able to. I mean, if I hadn't known this this deck ahead of time, I, I definitely would reg this deck for the challenge. Seems strong. Has a bad familiars matchup, but other than that, it seems good. All right. So I can go, I have seven mana, so I can actually go play Inspector, Double pump Basilisk Gate on Sentinels. But I think actually what's better is single pump plus play Squadron Hawk. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go Inspector. Sick. Oh, Pumpkin Queen. Hey. Thanks for, thanks for subbing for the six months, too. I really got to sub to your channel. I haven't, like, I, I'm so bad I don't sub to anybody. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I'm just outing myself here, but um, I really should. I need to just buy like a sub package and sub to everyone I want to support too. It's only fair. All right, let's go Hawk. But I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And let's go pump here. Attack for 10. Now I don't even need to strand this turn. I can just chump with Hawk if they attack. Land, sure. I thought we were going to lose this game, but one kind of fizzled out. We could potentially lose, but I don't think we will from here. I'm going to chomp. I'm just going to save the strands in the yard. Seeker of the Way. Okay. Deck doesn't play that main deck that often. A Lightning Bolt. I can kill this compared to Seeker. Rather kill the Flyer. Then they just can't do anything. Bolt this. And then do I just double pump here, attack? I don't think I'm in a rush. I'll just draw a card. Wait. I can still double pump. Okay, I'll still just... Double pump here. Leave back this, plus strands. There we go. We got it. We got it. Put a little 17, 18, Draven Infector. Two turn clock, not too bad. Get to chump next turn. And then we still have strands up. Run land by land. Nice. Kyla Sentinels plus Prismatic Strands. Love it. All right, we get the Revokes. We get the Leave No Trace. I think Electric Free is probably worth getting these little gnats at my house that just like fly right around your, your head. It's pretty annoying. <laughs> um, Let's see. 
Raven can probably go. I think Guardian is actually good here. Rally can race them potentially. Same with the lifeling on cat, I think can be relevant, but I don't know how good it is. You can board like this. Because I like, if I like, am able to stall the board out and they have like a big life linker, we may need Guardian. I could side it out, but I think taking out one cat is fine. Seeker of the Way, I think, is powerful enough to keep. It's really all about Sentinels plus Strands here, right? Revoke and Weave No, weave no Trace is great, and Revoke is just like, okay, I need to deal with something really bad. All right, I mean, I'm keeping this. I have Bolt, I have Strands, I have Revoke. I just can survive for a while, so I think that's what I want. This is, what, this is kind of like a hand I want. I need a threat, obviously, but... This is kind of a hand I want. I'm down to I'm down to Citadel Gate. Just get it down. I don't think I need to leave up bolt on one. I'd rather get a tap lane going. No Laguna Van Trail Blazer on one either game so far. That's surprising. And we won that game. They had turn one the abyss for like the first five turns. We had no answers to it. If we just had drawn a lightning bolt last game, they would have just gotten absolutely wrecked. I just think that deck is so susceptible. Wow. I think I'm just playing Hawk, but I'm just deciding how many Hawks to get if I want to discard strands or not. I think the answer is no, because I think leaving up strands for three mana is so critical in this matchup that I'll just get one. They're not gonna have like a flash creature or something. Do they just keep a hand with no creature? They have all protection spells. They're just going sky guard with protection up. I see, I see. They could also have mutagenic growth, which would be annoying. I have a couple options here. I have a line of Bolt Bolt, but Mutagenic Growth crushes that line. Don't love that. If they had Mutagenic, would they have just played Skyguard on two though? Maybe they were scared of Journey? Maybe Bolt Bolt is my best line. It's my best chance to kill their Skyguard right now. And then if they're double mute, if they're going mutagenic plus protection, then they still only have a 3 3 flying. I'm going to do it. I guess I could have attacked for one first. Probably better to just not. Okay, nice. Really glad I ended up going for it, obviously, because it worked out. Somehow didn't think that was going to work. I thought they were going to have mutagenic plus protection. But I guess not. Seeker of the Way. Rally. I don't think I'm in danger of dying or anything. I think I can just play my own Seeker plus Hawk. Rather resolve this than this, I suppose. They have Mana Tithe. Maybe that's wrong because this gets me two more Hawks, but they didn't have it. Wasn't really expecting it. Just, I know it's a card they play sometimes. We have Revoke, we have Strands, we got Hawks plus Rally here. Just feeling really good about our position. 
we can deal with like an ethereal armor or a benevolent blessing here with revoke. Are you an Umbra? Sure. Seeker is obviously really good when you're going off with all your enchantments on it and opponent doesn't have an answer. But I can gain life on the way back if they want to attack. Cartouche, sure. I don't think I need to revoke either of those enchantments. I think I can even just take a hit for six here. I think that's fine. Next turn I could like play Hawk, leave up strands. I like that. Deathblade. Two cards in hand. Interesting. I think I can just attack with everything. Attack with everything, play Seeker, pass. Yeah, it seems good. If they went double block on Seeker, then I could just play Rally the Peasants. Is that worth the risk of having to do that? Yeah, because then I just eat both their creatures. It's worth, it's worth for sure. Now I can just strands their turn. And then untap land, I can go rally, rally. Battlefield Raptor. There's just that, that deck just plays so many bad cards. Attack for four, sure. Not gonna strands that. Another revoke. I have one card in hand. I think I can... I mean, I could start with Revoke just to trigger my Seekers, because then I could just leave up Strands again. I don't hate it. Since, especially since I have another Revoke. If I had one more mana, I would just play attack and play rally and then still leave up strands, but I think I can just leave this up safely here. Now I go up to 16. If they swing with all, they might just die to rally on the crack back. Oh, whoops. I shouldn't have attacked with Hawks. And oh, this is a huge mistake. I forgot they just had decent blocks here. I just lose one creature and don't and only gain three life. This could still entice them to go for a big attack. I guess they have a vigilance creature, but it's a pretty bad play by me actually. I should have just left my Hawks back. Pun count like three or four on this league, but still like our position here. Sentinel's eyes gets vigilance. I think I'm likely gonna just strand this attack because I wanted. I'd rather just have strands in the graveyard so I don't have to continually leave up three mana. We'll see what they do. Could just take again, and then just play out like Hawks slowly. Attack for six vigilance. I think I just strands. It's just so much more mana efficient. That was a bad attack by me, but I think we might be okay. Let's get a palace sentinels going here or something.
another gate, huh? So now I can just play gate, play a couple hawks, go from there. Just shuffle, you know? Why not? Now our top card's perfect, right? Could have attacked with Seekers first, but it seems a little risky. Card two, sure. Should have a huge first striker. It's actually pretty annoying. Let's see. These both give first strike. This gives vigilance. I can exile the Sentinel's eyes. <laughs> Can't stop the first strike on that. I can hit for 15 in the air. If I had flashback strands right now. And they can't necessarily life link again. I'm going to do it. I guess, I guess they also have a flying blocker. This is interesting. This game is definitely not over. There are strands. Okay, nice. The Death Blade is also kind of crushing me. I can just go Basilisk Gate, pump a Squadron Hawk, attack for four, and then just play into Strands next turn. I mean, I guess that's my best line. I could go Basilisk Gate, a Seeker of the Way. It's a 5-5. Five five. Play Rally the Peasants. It's a 8-6. Doesn't actually quite do it. I think I just hit for four in the air, play a strands when they attack. Keep getting an advantage this way. Could draw another bolt or a journey for that battlefield raptor, then then they're just dead. Could draw weed no trace. Could draw Guardian of the Guild Pack, Pile of Sentinels, a lot of good cards to draw. Five, five, first strike vigilance. I'm just gonna take here. I don't think I care about taking. I can just keep hitting for four with my Hawk with the Levium strands. Ooh. I don't have this in the graveyard, so I'll probably just play strands next turn. Um, play strands like when they attack, and then I'll have strands in the graveyard so I can go screech, flashback, screech, and then I can go rally, flashback, rally for the win. So we found a potential line here. I guess if they have mana tithe, I get blown out. But I can always strands before blockers just in case. I definitely want strands in the graveyard anyway, so I'm going to try to cast it here. This is kind of just like moments piece a lot of times where it's just like so demoralizing because you're like, I'm not going to be able to get through that for so long. Okay, now I can go Screech, Flashback, Screech. Oh, there's the Palace Sentinels. They're at eight, though. I can also just keep pumping Hawk and attacking. 
but I think the Screech line is better. Do I also want to just play Palace Sentinels right now? Take the Monarch. Let's see. I can't quite go Pump with Bastos Gate plus play Palace Sentinels. I honestly don't know what the best choice is. But Screech, Flashback, Screech. I don't know how they're going to get out of that. Still can't attack with these Seekers, but I think that's fine. Okay. Now I just flash back a strands, and then next turn I go rally, flashback rally, attack with all my flyers. They're at eight. Feeling good. Looking like we're going to secure the 4 1 here. Oh no. Beckon Apparition, make a flyer, exile my strands. Not like this. Please. Then they're going to go like pro white on my seeker, make it eight power, kill you. Oh no. I guess I can, if I flash this back, this fizzles, right? Let's try it. So they don't, I don't want them to get the 1-1. One, one. Could be relevant if they gain a bunch of life. Because now this doesn't have a target. Yeah, nice. Almost missed that. Play land, that's a good sign. And they concede. Nice. Four one with the deck. And like I was like I've been saying, the deck felt fantastic. Um I really liked this version just because there's so much synergy between multiple angles of the deck where Zune the person, essentially the creator of the new style of gate decks with like eight tapped gates plus Basilisk gate and two color decks, found out that Sacred Cat was so good with the gates in a lot of matchups because it's a cheap lifelink threat that, you know, comes back. But if you want to play Faith, if you want to play Cat in your deck, you also get to play Faith as Looting, which is good with Cat and good with all these other flashback spells. So you just have so much synergy between Cat being good with Basilisk Gate, Cat being good with Looting, and then you're also just this Prismatic Strands mid-range deck. And when this card is well positioned, which I think it is really well positioned right now, this is a good deck choice. We lost a burn, but I think you're actually uh, pretty heavily favored against burn and specifically Hot Dogs um, because of Strands. If you're ever able to just discard a Strands against Hot Dogs, they basically can't win. And you can do that with the looting or hawk. So, um, or just getting to turn three without dying and then just casting a strand, putting it in the graveyard, then you can't really lose. Um, so because of that, I think this deck is really strong. You also get the lone missionaries to give you a little extra edge against the red decks. And then you have like the hate against affinity. You have the hate against blue decks. You're just really good against the fade decks in general because of Squadron Hawk plus all your flashback spells. Uh, I think you struggle against decks like Familiars, maybe um, some other combo decks and Tron decks where you're not quite fast enough, you're a little too mid-rangey. Um, I could see having trouble against stuff like Cycle Storm um, because we don't have any relics or any real hate for them uh, the way the deck is built right now. But that's a small percentage of the metagame and crushing the red and, you know, the other uh, Bay decks, plus having game against other mid-range decks, just seems like a really strong um, place to be for this deck. And I really like the gate mana base, so um, yeah, I would recommend this deck for a challenge. As far as changes to the list moving forward, 
I would probably um, consider going up to triple Palace Sentinel. Um, maybe cut Guardian while it is good. I don't know if you actually need it to win. You could have one in the sideboard or just not play any because the Monarch seems so strong. Um, then you also might want a 20 second land. You could play the fourth Bathless Gate or an extra Plains or even um, a fourth Mountain or like an Ash Barrens even. Um, I like the two Boros Garrison. That seems good. Obviously clunky with 10 tap lands, but I think that's just the price you pay for decent mana plus a gate package. Um, those are the only real changes I'd make. The sideboard felt fine. Uh, again, want the third palace and all, but I just don't know. The, the list seems really tight. Like possible cuts are Guardian going down to one rally, cutting our journey which is your limited interaction. I don't think you want to cut a looting. Um, you could play three Seeker of the Way. And I think those are your only options if you want to play like another Palace Sentinel, basically. Plus, like I was saying, you might want another land. So um, really tough to fit everything in, but deck seems great. Thank you so much for watching. YouTube channel, youtube.com slash snapbolt. Thank you for watching this far. Go sub to my YouTube channel, really the best way to support me. Twitch.tv slash Games is where I record live, and that'll do it for this YouTube video. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.